Hi, I'm Tony and welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the HJC Arfa 70 helmet. Arfa 70 is in its fifth year and its popularity has only increased in that time and I don't see any sign of it slowing down. It's been really popular with customers and I spent 2,000 miles in one of these helmets and really enjoyed my time with it. The shape and the comfort are the big things that really come across. It's aerodynamic and most people are really complimentary about how quiet it is and how much ventilation they get through. So let's run through the details of this helmet. It's made from HJC's PIM Plus shell material, which is a laminate of various lightweight fibers. That contributes to a weight for this helmet, which is a size medium on our scales at 1,484 grams, which I'd say is just a little bit lighter than the average for a helmet of this size and this style. There's ventilation at the top and around the chin. On the top, there's a really easy to use slide switch with two stages on it, one and two. A lot of the customer reviewers are really complimentary about the amount of air that that vent brings in. Some say it actually becomes too cold when you've got it fully open. So if you find that's the case with this helmet, it's worth just keeping it open at the first step. So that's joined on the top by these vents at the rear of the helmet, which allow in a certain amount of cooling air. But in my experience with this helmet, that's also backed up by a lot of the customers. That doesn't really add very much to the venting experience. Those chin vents are actually two. It looks like there's only one, but there are two. This vent here reveals the scoops here to bring in some cooling air. There's also an internal switch here that uncovers this mesh area to allow through a little bit more air. Like these vents at the top, most customers didn't really find any benefit from that one, nor did I. Most of the effective venting comes through that section there. Moving on to the visor. It's a really easy change system with this simple lever operated switch that's really friendly for newcomers and you can change this. HJC call it rapid fire and I think that it lives up to the title. It's really, really easy to change the visor. It's protected against mist by a Pinlock Max Vision insert, which is also a Pinlock 120. So it's got a good level of moisture protection as well. But that hasn't always been the case with this helmet. Earlier versions of the R470 came with what was called a skip fog visor. It was made by the same kind of group of companies that make the pin locks, but it was different material in the way it sat on the visor. It didn't seal as well, and to put it simply, it wasn't as effective. It's good to see that HJC have gone back to using pin lock on the later models. If you have got an R470 with a skip fog visor, you can replace it with the pin lock insert that comes in later helmets. It's available separately, and I'll add a link to that product in the description for this video in case you want to upgrade it. To operate the visor kind of in daily use, it operates with this central latch, which HJC have used on all their Arthur helmets stretching back to round about 2010. It's a pretty effective system. Push it down. It's got an initial clasp to hold it in place at the base. But additionally, this helmet, along with some of the really racy Arthur helmets, has a sliding lock tab on there which means that that visor is really hard to lift. That was introduced for racers who found that sometimes this latch would bump on the tank when riding got really aggressive and would, would pop it open. So that sliding switch stops that. In general use, what I found with, in my time with this helmet was that that ended up locking me in and I didn't quite know why I was stuck inside the helmet. It's worth practicing using that slide switch if you buy one of these helmets. And if you find yourself stuck inside the visor, wanting to lift it and don't know why it won't lift, then you just need to slide that. If you do need to lift the visor, it will, it will overpower that slide lock with a big shove, but it does feel like you're gonna break the visor. So it's worth learning that that's in place and how to use it. As well as the main visor, there's an internal sun visor behind it, and it operates on a sliding switch on the base here. Good amount of extension on that comes down pretty much to the breath guard around the front and then when you lift it just give it a firm press and that locks it up it takes it out of your vision and make sure it's not going to slip back down into your field of view when you don't want it to that internal sun visor is also anti-mist coated so you can maintain good clear vision no matter what the weather 
The interior of the R70 is really popular with people who've bought this helmet. It's plush, it's moisture wicking, and it's very snug. Some people have found that it's a little bit tight when they first get the helmet, but that it does give with time and they end up with something that's really tailored to their head shape. That snug fit is in keeping with the R70's sporty side and it's fully removable, the interior. There are also these emergency release cheek pads that make life easier at the scene of an accident. The interior is also designed to work really well for people who wear spectacles. The cheek pads at the top here have no foam. They're really slender, which creates that room for the spectacle arm to slide down nice and easily. Some of the helmets that are considered to be eyewear adaptive or have a system, that means taking some foam out of the liner to create that room for the spectacle arms. You don't need to do that with this helmet. They've been slimmed down from the start, so there's room there. It's at the sporty end rather than the touring end, but there are recesses inside the helmet to accommodate speakers for an intercom. There are foam sections in there as standard that you just pop out and then the speakers go in in its place. As I said, this helmet's become really popular with customers in its first five years in existence. We've had over 120 customer reviews on this helmet and there's been almost universal praise for it. The aerodynamic shape is something that people particularly praise and the majority of people say this helmet offers a really quiet ride. There are some people within those reviews who find it noisy, but what we find with noise is it's a really subjective issue and something that's quiet for one person is going to be noisy for another, but nothing stands out from the reviews to suggest that this helmet has an issue with noise. One other thing that comes out from the customer reviews is that the sizing of this R470 is a little bit different to how many other manufacturers do it. You need to check really carefully on the sizing chart to make sure that the size you're ordering covers the centimetre measurement of your head because there's an overlap there that you don't get on other helmets. I hope that gives you a fully detailed picture about the R470, but if there's anything you feel that we've missed, please pop a question in the comments section below and we'll get back to you with an answer as soon as we can. Thanks for watching.